Good morning, this is Angela with Parkos Permaculture and this chair is really squeaky. I might, might swap out chairs real quick. Hmm, that's not a lot better, but we'll go with it. I recently made a video in which I discussed my 2022 garden seed order. And in that order were a number of perennial veg starts. Some of them were new for me and some of them were kind of old standbys that I either had lost in my garden due to chicken damage or I had uh, needed to bolster the numbers and was unsuccessful at getting those plants to go to seed in my own garden. But a couple of them were plants that I had not been able to grow before now, either because they were difficult to source the seeds for or because they are notoriously fussy and so I had avoided growing them in my garden. And today I wanna just dive in and try and tackle one of those fussy divas and that's Good King Henry. I'm gonna see if I can get it going in my garden. It is um, known to be really tricky to get going from seed and I'm gonna give it a really good try and try and follow all of the steps and set myself up for success. Years and years ago, there was one source in Portland that would sell divisions of this plant, and they have since moved to another state very far away, and I cannot find a local place or even a, um, a an online order to get a division of Good King Henry. If you can find a division of it, you're going to have a lot more ease getting it going in your garden. But those of us who have no choice but to try and start from seed are at a disadvantage. This plant tends to germinate really sporadically, often low germination. And when you follow the directions that everybody says are the way you're supposed to grow it, sometimes you can still be out of luck. So I would encourage you, if you're ordering Good King Henry, to, to take your seed packet and divide it into small batches and maybe try a couple of different techniques. Kind of, you know, shotgun it a little bit to see if any of them are successful because the tried and true techniques sometimes aren't for folks. Uh, in fact, one of the most common things you see when you look up Good King Henry growing in your garden or permaculture Good King Henry is folks being really frustrated at their failure to get this seed going in the garden. Before we plant it, let's talk about what Good King Henry is and why I want to grow it in my garden. So Good King Henry is a perennial crop that produces shoots in the spring that you can eat like asparagus. You can blanch them like asparagus, put a pot over them, um, or like sea kale. You can eat the leaves in the spring. And then later in the summer, you can eat the uh, buds as if they were broccoli, kind of like a broccoli rob. And you can eat the flowers. You can eat them in your salads or you can uh, batter them and fry them and make a little fritter with them. So this plant is really nice. It has a diverse uh, diversity of ways that you can enjoy eating it. And for me, if there's like many different kinds of dishes I can get out of a plant, I'm much more likely to put it in my garden and I'm much more likely to eat it. So you should be aware that as you move from spring into summer, that the leaves of Good King Henry can get quite bitter, but the buds and flowers do not. So it's definitely one of those greens, and there are so many of them, that you enjoy in the spring, but they get kind of tough and bitter as the season goes on. I have seen a number of folks talk about uh, the way that they consume this plant when the leaves are a little bit more bitter, is that you soak the leaves in salt water for about 30 minutes before you cook them, before you throw them into a stir fry. When the leaves are young, you can eat them raw or you can blanch them like spinach, but as they get older, you really should cook them. And that salt water soak really helps. Folks who boil them, boil them in salt water as well and find that that helps kind of leach out some of the bitterness. So let's talk a little bit about the origins of this plant. Most American gardeners are not familiar with it. It tends to be grown in Europe. I think England is a common place for this plant to be cultivated. It's some places considered a weed despite its low rate of spreading and its low germination. It was originally put in the genus Chenopodium and some folks still classify it there. So I don't know if you're familiar with the garden weed and permaculture veggie fat hen, Chenopodium album. I think it's album and not albus. I'll make sure that I clarify. Chenopodium album is uh, another one of those weeds that permaculture folks love to put in their food forest because the leaves are entirely edible and full of all kinds of good nutrition. The Good King Henry plant is uh, 
similar in its shape and habit to fat hen and was classified in the genus Chenopodium. Recently, Good King Henry has been shifted into the genus Blightum. I guess it is not actually that closely related to fat hen. It does not belong in Chenopodium. So Blightum bonus Henricus is the current uh, scientific name for Good King Henry. Now, Good King Henry is a plant that if you are gonna grow it in your garden, you need to be aware of the conditions because not only is it kind of a <clears throat> fussy plant to get going from seed, but then it needs a certain set of growing uh, conditions in order to be really successful. I am pushing it in zone 8B, growing this veggie here. Historically, I think Portland would have been fine, but we are facing much hotter, drier summers. And this may be a plant that is not a long-term successful in a garden in a warming climate like mine. But Good King Henry, you can grow it in zones four through seven and in zones eight and nine with special care. So let's talk about the conditions that it needs to grow. Good King Henry does well in a moist, fertile, well-draining soil. I have moist soil here, I have fertile soil here. I have a lot of good uh, humus that I've built up, but my subsoil is dense clay, so we'll see. I'm going to probably build up mounds and plant it in that so it has a nice big depth of good rich soil in which to grow a really strong root system. Again, this is a perennial veg. I'm not just thinking about growing it for this year, I'm thinking about making conditions that are conducive for the next decade to set this plant up for success. Not only does it need moist, well-draining soil, it cannot handle hot, sunny conditions in the summer. So if you're growing this in zone four and five, you can just put it out wherever in your garden and you'll probably be fine. For me in zone 8B, I am envisioning that this plant is ideal in my food forest gardens on the back side, on the north side of my fruit trees, so that there is sun coming in in the spring. It does need sun in the spring sun coming in in the spring and then after my fruit trees are well leafed out this plant and other um, guild support plants are leafed out that my good king henry gets a substantial amount of afternoon shade i think a food forest location is going to be ideal for this plant again i'm just kind of spitballing here based on what i know about the growth habit and what i've read from a lot of english gardeners who grow this this is how i'm hoping to adapt it to my climate so i will definitely be reporting back on whether i have success or not so it needs that afternoon shade and protection from intense sun and from drying out so aside from getting the uh, afternoon shade in the summer, I'm gonna make sure I mulch it really deeply so that the soil does not have an opportunity to dry out. Good thing I'm already mulching all of my fruit guilds really deeply with a nice thick layer of wood chips. So I think that those growing conditions are gonna help me get this plant established and keep it going for the long term. So I'm looking forward to a harvest of, oh, my budgie is saying hi. Hi, Sunny. I'm looking forward to a harvest of the shoots in spring that I can cook like asparagus, the young leaves in spring that I can use in salads and stir fries, the buds that I can cook like broccoli rob in the summer, and the blossoms that I can put in salads or I can fry them. If you have watched this channel much in the past, you'll know I kind of have a penchant for taking flowers, battering them, and frying them. I like to do it with um, locust flowers, with elderberry flowers, with um, my sea kale flowers. I just think it's really yummy. It's a way to um, enjoy those veggies in an unusual preparation that most folks don't tend to cook them. I think flowers are underrated, and I think they make really tasty fruit. Be aware that your Good King Henry plant is gonna get about two feet tall, and when it blooms, it'll put up a, another 10 to 12 inches of a stalk with the flowers on the top. If you don't wanna harvest the flowers, you can just let it self seed where it will. I, again, I'm not quite sure how this plant is considered invasive in certain places because it has such a low rate of germination and requires such very specific conditions in order to germinate. But some folks do report that either from taking the seed head and sprinkling the seeds over a prepared bed in the garden, they do get germination or just letting the seed heads fall next to the parent plant, um, they will get babies. I think I'm gonna let some of my seed heads fall next to the parent plant 
because if I have the conditions in which the parent plant is highly successful, that's probably a good set of growing conditions to get germination, right? I've already got habitat that my perennial enjoys. I bet I will probably have better germination if I let the seed head just fall over and babies start there. So my nurseries will be in C2 in my plant guilds, in my food forest guilds. Um, that's just where I'm going to go ahead and propagate the babies as best I can. But to get started, I don't have a, an established plant, so I have to use seeds that I bought from the store. So my Good King Henry seeds are prepared from Fedco. They ask you to please chill them for five days in a moist medium. That could be a paper towel that's been moistened and you put it in a plastic bag with the seeds and put it in your fridge for five days. It could be damp sand. And Good King Henry really needs chilling. I have read folks put it up to 10 weeks in their refrigerator if they harvest it from directly outside. And some folks take the seed heads and put them in damp sand and put them in a shelter location in their garden over winter. Because this is telling me I only need to chill it for five days, I'm assuming Fedco has somehow stored these in a cold condition, so they don't need more than five days of cold stratifying. However, I'm gonna take a percentage of these seeds and I am going to put them in damp sand in my fridge for probably six or eight weeks and just see how those do. Again, I'm shotgunning this a little bit. You can direct sow or you can start them in pots in your greenhouse. I am going to do some of both. Again, I've just gotta try as many potentially successful techniques as I can because this plant is so like low success rate. It's just such a difficult plant to get going. So I would encourage you, if you are starting Good King Henry, lower your expectations and broaden your technique and maybe you will have success. I will definitely be talking to you all about what happens in the future in the summer in my garden. Um, this, if you watched my video last summer about Turkish Rocket, I ended up buying starts of Turkish Rocket because it similarly can be reported as invasive or self-sowing, but a lot of gardeners report that it just doesn't and it's much easier to get going from divisions. Good King Henry is the same. So I've successfully overwintered my Turkish Rocket, starting to leaf out in multiple places in my garden. Fingers crossed I have similarly successful technique and strategy here with my Good King Henry. Let me show you how I'm going to do this. Let me flip the camera around. Alrighty, so here's my packet. You can see this is an open pollinated perennial. I got a little bit of water on it. Uh, Blight and Bonus Henricus is the current name. Chill five days in a moist medium. Sand is ideal or a damp paper towel. If you are chilling for more than five days, I would encourage sand over a damp paper towel, which can get moldy and sand won't. So, so a half inch deep, two to four inches apart. I will probably sew them a little bit more thickly than that, uh, just because that's my own habit. It says germination of this packet is above 75%. So when you order from seed catalogs, you really wanna check what the germination rate is. That will help determine how much you want to overplant. These should all be tested. Some plants, the germination rate is as low as 25 or 30 or 50%. 75% is probably pretty darn good for good King Henry, provided you're following the techniques that they say. I am not gonna direct so. Uh, a chunk of these. I'm going to put half of them into pots and half of them in a spot in my garden under an apple tree. And then I'll be thinning them. I will uh, see if I have enough germinating to actually thin to one foot apart. But the adult plants, I'm going to leave one foot apart so they get um, about 12 to 18 inches around and then they can get two feet tall. So they are a little bit of a conical shaped plant. So here, are some of the seeds that I chilled. Let's take a look at them. They've been in my fridge for, this is day six. So they're kind of, they're very small seeds. They are a little bit um, sticky feeling now, a little bit gooey, kind of like chia seeds when you soak chia seeds. That's what they look and, and feel like to me. So I'm gonna be planting these out, again, half in pots and half in my garden. So I would encourage you, if you are somebody who is thinking about growing more of these unusual perennial veggies, give it a try. Always give them a try, but just be aware that like, just because something is 
a plant that everybody says, oh, like this is a permaculture plant. This is something that needs to be grown in a permaculture garden. Grow what you like to eat and what your poultry likes to eat and what your livestock likes to eat, what your family likes to eat. And if you have a market garden, what you can sell readily. So just because I'm growing good King Henry, if it's not for you, don't feel like you have to grow things that I feature in my videos if that's not something you enjoy eating. I'm just carefully putting these in. Again, they're kind of like a little, little sticky and slimy. They get a little gelatinous here when, when they're chilled. And then the other half I'm going to save and I'm going to plant out in the garden. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll check out my other videos on starting some perennial veggies for your food forest garden. Not only food forests, but a lot of these veggies are really decorative and really uh, versatile, and you can start them in any style of garden. The more we have perennial veggies in our diet, the more we have a low maintenance garden that takes care of itself, and the more we diversify the array of food in our diet. All of that is really important for us as eaters and to be more resilient gardeners. Please check out my Patreon down in the description if you are interested in supporting this channel. That would be fabulous. I will be back later this week. Thanks.